Once you read it, you think, what a terrible day to have eyes. Hi, I have a cold, at least what I hope is a cold, and I'm feeling really cranky. So I thought it might be fun to complain today. And I'm here to tell you about books that I hated or at least liked way less than I thought I would. I figured this is a good moment to do a dramatic reading of my most popular review on Goodreads. On Cult Classic. It's not me, it's you and all your exes. I'm not the right audience for this book. I thought I was. The title and opening had me so excited and led me to thinking that this was the kind of book that I would love, but it's a totally different book. And it was not the kind of book I cared for. 80% of this book focuses on Lola, our narrator, interacting with an ex and rehashing their relationship. And each relationship was perfectly mundane. They bled into each other, they lacked substance, the narration was focused on being witty and emotionally detached, and making witty comments about the emotional attachment, and that was just not my scene. I don't find lukewarm apathy towards people in my life very relatable, which is largely why this book drove me up the wall. The other 20% of the book focuses on cult stuff that's really more loosely sci-fi-esque wellness center spa, um, and it's otherwise kind of bland. I couldn't help but picture, like, literally a Scientology spa. Um, that said, I will recommend it to a specific audience. If you think that it would be cathartic to go through a roster of mediocre Tinder dates from the perspective of a mid-30 year old New Yorker, then this is the book for you. But to me, reading this felt like being cornered at a party by someone that I didn't want to talk to. That's really all you need to know about Cult Classic. <laughs> Another book that I'm remo not remotely millennial enough for is This Disaster. Okay, this book, I think it really succeeds in what it tries to do. Like, I actually think it's masterfully crafted. Um, the narrator is a terrible person. Like, she is just beyond anything a terrible person. And I picked the, this book looking for something about rest and retreat. I think I was looking for uh, Wintering, which is a nonfiction book I really enjoyed, but instead I got this mess. And this is an absolute mess, and it's like, ugh. This was a book where I didn't know if I wanted to give a five stars, three stars, or one star, but ultimately I settled for one because my life was legitimately better before I read this. I'm pretty sure reading this book triggered a mild depressive episode. It was just a bad time, and it took me so long to finish it compared to the length of the book. It is not that long. And once I was free of it, it felt like cutting ties with a toxic friend. Um, it looks really cool on my shelf. I bought it before I read it, and I'm glad it looks cool on my shelf. I will probably get, be getting rid of my copy, so if you know me in real life, let me know if you want it, because... Actually, if you do want it, I probably shouldn't give this to you because it is it is a bad time. Seriously, this book has like a cult following and I don't think it's a good one. I think if you relate to this particular character, that says something about you and that something that it's saying is not very positive. All I'm trying to say is save yourself. Save yourself. One book that I really like can't recommend to anyone but that I still went out and bought for a copy for myself is Earthlings. Don't be fooled by the adorable cover. Look at this really cute hedgehog. Don't we love the cute hedgehog? Yeah, we do. That's the only cute thing in the book is this hedgehog. There is horrible things happening to children. There is lots of violence. There is cannibalism. There is, did I mention horrible things happening to children? Because a lot of that happens in this. This book is horrifying. This book is absolutely horrifying. The only book that I have read that is more horrifying than this was The Discomfort of Evening. However, this is horrifying in a really interesting way. If you've read other works by Sayaka Murata, you will have a sense of how enchan enchanting her writing is. So to be fair, if you are comfortable with very, very jarring and graphic subjects, you may find something in this book. I can't tell you why I bought it. Maybe it is the hedgehog on the cover. But I will never recommend this to you. Ever. I, I will literally never recommend this to you. 
Um, that said, it remains stuck in my mind and I'll probably reread it. So I don't know what that says about me. Another book that I can never recommend to a single person, largely because of the premise. I can't even tell you the premise of the book. I'm not sure if I will say it on camera. Um, and you'll notice my copy is extremely tattered because it's from a thrift shop and I think it's stolen from a library based on what's out front. And that is My Sweet Audrina by V.C. Andrews. And that is really the case for all OG V.C. Andrews. V.C. Andrews is this very bizarre writer who lives in a messed up gothic, like all her books are messed up gothic, picture very very rich families in New England being extremely incestuous and murderous towards one another. Picture like soap opera style, a million people are falling down staircases at all times and rupturing, like breaking their spines and breaking their legs and having their skulls crack open, amnesia galore. It is the most dramatic. And a lot of her stuff is series based, but My Sweet Audrina stands alone and it stands alone as her best worst book. My Sweet Audrina follows a nine-year-old Audrina who is named after her dead sister, who is also nine, who was nine at the time of her death, who was the better Audrina, the one her parents loved more, and she is the replacement Audrina. And she tries to find out what happened to her dead sister, the original good Audrina. This book is so messed up. Content warning for literally everything. Lots of bad things happening to children. Again, this is sort of the theme for this group. But at the same time, there is something very addictive about this book. There's something so bizarrely addictive, and I did enjoy reading it. And honestly, I could see myself even reading it again. Enjoy is a strong word. I don't know if enjoy is the right word, but it's very intriguing. It's very addictive. It's V.C. Andrews at her worst slash best. If you've read any V.C. Andrews before and enjoy the off-the-wall gothic, everyone is falling down staircases and terrible things are happening to them vibes, I don't recommend this, but if you pick it up, let's, let's maybe have a conversation. Um, this will remain seared in my brain for a very long time. And then I can't make this video without mentioning what I know some people refer to as the worm book, also known as Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke. Things have gotten worse since I read this book because this book is like reading a snuff film and I'm not joking. It is, it begins as a long distance romance over email between two women that meet up, meet over the sale of an antique apple peeler. Wholesome, right? Sounds amazing. Sounds super wholesome. Absolutely not. Terrible things start to happen as one of them begins to financially dominate the other. And the one who is getting all this money starts doing terrible things for this other woman that she has never met. Terrible things happen. Disgusting things happen. And disgusting, I mean, on the most visceral level. Again, this is called The Worm Book. And a recurring tagline in this book is, what have you done today to deserve your eyes? The thing with this book is that once you read it, you think, what a terrible day to have eyes. I would not recommend this to anybody. I don't actually know anyone who liked this. Uh, this is pure shock value. The plot is not good. The writing, I'm sorry, is not particularly good, and it is just, it's snuff, it's a snuff film in book form. The nicest thing about this book is the cover. The cover is gorgeous. I read this book in one sitting, it only takes about an hour to read, and it was one of the worst hours I spent in the past year. I do think there's a lot of merit in reading books that you don't like, and I think there's a lot of merit in reading books that challenge you and disturb you and make you feel uncomfortable feelings. So I don't actually regret reading any of these books, but wow, do I hate some of them. But I think that's the point of art, is to elicit a visceral gut response, and these really do it. So give me a shout if you've read any of these. I am very curious to know what you think. I hope you read some good books or at least some memorable ones. Until next time.